This is Jared from Commit Quality. And in this video, I want to break down a basic Playwright N unit test file. I think it's really important to know exactly what's going on in your test file before we can before we continue with anything else, because this is going to be the base. It's the anatomy of your whole Playwright test, right? You're going to be using these everywhere. So let's start from the top lines and we'll work our way down. The using statements, nothing really to do with Playwright. It's basically C Sharp's way of saying import all of these packages that we want to use. So for example, in the last video, we installed Microsoft Play right n unit using the nuget package manager if i was to comment this out you can see there's a bunch of red squiggly lines appearing because now what visual studio is saying to us is we don't know where this is coming from we don't know what page test is and that's because we're importing it from the package we installed in our previous video so anytime you want to use an external package or anytime you want to kind of depend on something external you would be using a using statement to import what you need next then is our namespace and once again this is a c sharp thing where namespaces are used in c sharp to kind of organize and provide the level of separation of code so what you could see is if we had a bunch of folders in here we could say playwright test the namespace say we had a folder called subscribe then our namespace would be subscribe and under the scenes these are all being kind of handled and organized via namespaces so they wouldn't all be top level of you know maybe this should actually match what the project is so it could be commit quality practice and then we could have another folder which this test lives inside called subscribe in this case we don't so i'll just keep the namespace as commit quality if i could spell commit quality practice now then we get into some of the more n unit and playwright specific things so here we have the parallelizable attribute and if you hover over it it's going to tell you exactly what it is anyway but it marks a test assembly a fixture or a method, in our case, it's the whole kind of test fixture files that may be running in parallel. And then we pass in through this parameter, a parallel scope, which states here specifies the degree to which a test and its descendants may run in parallel. So by default, when we created this, um, we've got the parallel scope set to self. And this means that the test may be running parallel with others at the same level. So, and it's only valid on classes and methods, but has no effect on a assemblies if i was to get rid of this and say dot you can also see you've got all which basically means everything can everything can run together at the same time yourself which we were just using children fixtures so if you want to look into these you can literally select one of them or hover over one of them so you can see fixtures it explains what it is fantastic so let's just leave that itself for now we'll get into kind of parallelization a little bit more into future videos we then have the test fixture so you can hover over it and it marks the class as a test fixture you might have you know the optional setup or teardown methods but it's telling us here this is going to mark this class as this test fixture moving down then we have the class which is a c-sharp thing once again where we've just named this the same as what our file name is so in our case we've got public class example you can name this whatever you want but typically best practice will be to match it up to whatever your file name is and this is inside this is where you're going to contain all your tests but then also we'd extend in this class with something called page test page test is a class that is coming from playwright it basically means that each test gets a fresh copy of a web page created in its own unique browser context so like we've done here extending this class is the simplest way of writing a playwright test. So this is exactly what we're doing here. So that means when we come down to using the tests, it means we are getting a fresh copy of each web page created, which is exactly what this is. For example, if I was to get rid of this and hit save, you can see now that page test hasn't been brought in, which means the expect is failing because it relies on the page test. So let's just add that back in and now then we can actually come in down to our tests themselves so this test attribute is going to mark the method as a test so uh, let's build let's build our project a minute because i want to show you what this means because this is something i've seen a lot of people fall over when we built this we can see in our test explorer if you don't have this open you can go to test and go test explorer select this and this will open up this tab and at the moment we only have one test which is this example test and we've got the name of this one here if 
I was to remove this test attribute, hit save and rebuild my project. What you can see here is the test has disappeared from Test Explorer. And that's because without this test attribute, we wouldn't pick up that this method is supposed to be a test. So it wouldn't show in your Test Explorer. So if you're kind of writing your tests and you're not seeing them in your Test Explorer, it's highly likely that you may have just left out the test attribute, which can cause a lot of problems if you're quite new to this. And next down then we have the method itself. So it's an asynchronous task because everything here is running asynchronously, which is why we have the awaits on here. And you've got the name of the method. So in this case, it's just the name of the test. You could name this wherever you want. If I renamed it to uh subscribe hit save what you'll see in your test explorer when we go down to it subscribe is the name of the test put that back to home page has playwright and title i think this is just what was generated when we've done the original video Ev then everything inside this tech declaration this test declaration is the test body which is basically what your test is going to be so here we have a wait page go to async which is going to take us to a page so we talked a lot a little bit about the the page property when we removed the page test so this is what's going to drive everything so this is where you can where you can create your locators, where you can action things. So in our case, we say in the first command we want to call is go to, which is going to say go to the web page, and that's an action. In the next line of code, we have an expect, which I've actually commented here, expect a title to contain a substring. So we're using regex here, which is why we had to import the using of regex here. Assertions. This assertion is coming directly from Playwright NUnit, and it is very important as well. So this kind of page assertion class provides assertion methods that can be used to make assertions about the page's state given locators. What you can see as well is a asynchronous. So if you have seen any of my previous kind of Playwright Node.js videos, it's exactly the same here. You're going to like the fact that this will be asynchronous and it's kind of a web first assertion, meaning that it's going to repeat itself until it's met the timeout or until it's actually succeeded. I'll go into assertions a bit more in a future video. However, it is very important to know that all this is coming from the page test and Playwright NUnit package, the page test class and NUnit package. Next then, we create a no locator. So once again, we use in the page property and we say in get a element by its role so in this case we've said the name of get started this has then stored it into a variable of getting started which we can reuse later on in the tests once again locators are extremely important in playwright as well they kind of add the action ability and the retry ability we're basically rinsing and repeating more we've already said we're having another assertion here which we're expecting this get started locator to have the attribute href which includes docs and intro in the next line then we say in use this get started locator and click it so we say in okay i want to get this get started locator and click on it once again we'd await in everything which is very important because this is all asynchronous and then we do another expect which is expecting the url to have or to contain the word intro i think it's very important to start from scratch and make sure we completely understand the test file like i said you could get tripped up by not having an await you might not say it's an asynchronous task in your test declaration or like we touched upon if you haven't added this test attribute you're not going to see it as an actual test these are all vital and important things to know and however basic it seems it's definitely something you want to know because this can save you time on these kind of little annoying annoying problems that might pop up if you weren't to break down a test file as always Thank you for watching. A like and subscribe is appreciated. Have a good day.